What is up guys, it's Delt Lead, and today, like I promised, I'm going to be showing you all how to build one of the more complicated and involved programs than anything I've shown so far on the channel. We're going to be learning how to build an automatic landing script that can calculate the precise time to ignite its engines and has routines to safely lower to the ground if the program fires too early. This program will also be able to run multiple times in a flight so you can launch, land, launch, and land again all without breaking the code and it can be turned on and off at will. It will also have a hover mode that will keep your craft flying at a constant height for as long as you want it to. Now if you've enjoyed the Vizzy for Dummies tutorial series so far and you'd like to see more of it then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to become a supporter of the channel and help me continue to make Simple Rockets 2 content then consider becoming a member of the channel to get access to exclusive members only perks and to see your name at the end of my videos. I'm going to change up the order of this tutorial a little bit and I'm going to show you the finished project before I explain everything behind it. Now this is the code that we're going to use to land our rockets and you may be thinking to yourself, dang that is a long piece of code, how am I ever going to be able to understand all of that? Now it may look daunting at first but this is actually a pretty simple program to understand and we're going to approach it one layer at a time so you see how and why everything is structured the way it is. So. How do we create a program that we can turn off and on at will, it can be reset multiple times in a flight, and it can tell what mode it needs to be in? We need to use logic programming like I had talked about in my last video in the series. Logic programming, using if statements with different conditions, will allow us to create a series of choices for our program given our inputs and whatever situation the program is in. Now, the first thing we're going to need is a while true loop. This loop will repeat for as long as the craft is operational. Everything else about this program is going to sit inside this loop and anything that isn't in this loop will only be executed once and then the program won't look at it again. So we need all of the commands that initiate the burns, that initiate the hovers, that stop the burns and stop the hovers. All of that has to sit within inside this loop or we're not going to be able to do the program more than once in a flight. That's the whole point of being able to reuse this program multiple times in a single flight. Next, we're going to use a few variables to tell the code what activation groups we're going to use to turn on or off our landing program and our hover program. Now I'm putting these outside the loop because it only needs to look at these once and they're never going to change during flight. So it saves processing power by putting this outside the loop. Now I'm using variables instead of just typing the numbers directly into the different lines of code because if I want to change the activation group and I don't use variables, I would have to go to each line of code where I've used that number and change it manually but if I use a variable then I only have to change it in the statement here declaring the variable and then the program will automatically update that value for every part of the code elsewhere. I'm also going to create a variable and call it drop height. Now this will be used a little bit later in the program but this is basically saying that this altitude in meters above the ground is the height at which I'm comfortable with the engines being cut and letting the craft land on its legs. Now we'll set it to 10 meters for now, but we can easily adjust it later if it's too low or too high. Now on to the next part of the program. We want the code to continuously check if either the landing or hover programs have been activated, but we don't want them to both be activated at the same time. So we're going to use if statements like in that last video. For the first if statement, we'll put this block of Vizzy code in. The program will run whatever I put in this if statement. If the landing activation group is on and the hover activation group is not on. We'll do the same thing again, but flip it. The program will run what is inside this if statement if the hover activation group is on and the landing activation group is not on. We'll have one more if statement. If both activation groups are on, then we want to turn them both off and display an error. We don't want the program to simultaneously try to land and hover in the air at the same time. Now, at the end of this while loop, I'm going to add the statement wait zero seconds. Now, this may seem kind of silly. Why would I put a block of code that tells the program to wait for zero amounts of time? Well, that little wait action will actually help keep the program running smoother through the loop by syncing it up with the game. A wait zero command basically is telling the program to wait until the next frame and then continue. Now inside of these if statements I'm going to create what's called a custom instruction for each. One will be our hover program and the other will be our landing burn program. Instructions in Vizzy are a block of code that run whenever they are called in another section of code. So wherever I add one of these blocks in here that says the name of the instruction, the Vizzy program knows to stop where it's reading and skip to the landing burn function and do that. 
you can call a custom instruction in multiple places in your code whenever you want the program to repeat a common set of instructions. And this is a great tool for trimming down the length of your program or, in our case, keeping it organized and easy to read. Now onto the custom instructions themselves. We'll start with the hover program because it's a lot simpler to look at. First we have a while loop, but instead of an always being true statement in the while loop, there are some conditions. The while loop will keep running as long as our hover activation group is on and our landing activation group is off. Now this is the same statement as the if statement that initially called this instruction. Basically what this means is so long as we are still calling the program to run, keep this while loop true. If either of those change, the loop will stop and the program will finish the hover instruction by cutting the throttle. Within the while loop, we have the real meat of the program. We have a variable called max TWR, which calculates the thrust to weight ratio of our craft if its engines were at 100% throttle. Thrust to weight ratio can be written in a few forms, but the one I'm using for this program defines it in terms of acceleration of our craft due to the engines being fired, divided by the acceleration of the craft due to gravity. This variable is updated every frame because our craft's mass, and therefore the max TWR, changes as fuel is burned. All the hovering program does is keep our craft's vertical velocity close to zero by changing the TWR of our engines, increasing or decreasing the throttle. If we're falling, it'll increase the throttle of our engines, raising our TWR above one and slowing us down. If we're rising, it will th lower the throttle, lowering our TWR below one and causing us to be pulled down by gravity. And if we're not moving, if our vertical velocity is zero or close to zero, it'll keep our TWR at one. A TWR of 1 means that the thrust created by your engines exactly cancels out the acceleration due to gravity. This keeps us still in the air at a constant altitude. Now, the way we will do this is a bunch of if statements. Feel free to pause the video now to read through this block of code. It's actually pretty self-explanatory if you read each of the if statements. But fear not, because I will read them to you now if you're still struggling to understand what's going on here. First off. If our rocket is falling faster than 5 meters per second, move the engines to full throttle to stop us. If we're falling slowly, then bring the throttle just over a 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. If we're rising slowly, then lower the throttle to just under a thrust to weight ratio of 1. And if we're going up faster than 5 meters per second, cut off our engines and let us slow down. And finally, if our rocket's velocity, vertically, is between negative 1 and 1 meters per second, keep our thrust to weight ratio constant so that we hover nearly motionless in the air. Now let's test out the hover mode on our program and see how it works. As you can see, the hover program cuts our throttle since we're rising, then as soon as we start to slow down and approach a zero vertical velocity, the engines kick in and it keeps us in the air. Likewise, when I turn the program off and I fall for a while before turning it back on, the program takes the throttle to 100%, then backs off as the craft slows down. Now, let's take a look at the landing burn part of the program. From a quick glance, we can see that this is a little bit more complicated, especially this long line here in the middle, so let's break it down piece by piece. The first thing the landing program does when it's called is lock the heading of the rocket retrograde. Now that makes sense, because we're obviously trying to cancel out our vertical velocity as quickly as possible, so firing retrograde will slow us down. But this will cause a slight program that we're going to address later in the limitations of this program. Next, we have a while loop that will run so long as we are not grounded. This loop does two things. One, it calculates the altitude we will need to fire our engines at, and two, it checks to see if we are at that altitude yet. The variable land burn out or landing burn altitude is defined here, and the math for that looks pretty messy. This is one of the kinematic equations, and it is currently solved for the position term. Kinematics are a field in physics that uses calculus to determine the relationships between position, speed, acceleration, and time. I'm not going to get into the full calculus derivation of the equation used here, but you can see it on the screen in its original form and in the form solved for position, which is what we're using. 
Basically, this equation takes our current speed, how fast we would decelerate based on our engine's thrust and gravity, and determines the height we would need to start burning in order to have a velocity of zero when we reach the ground. You'll notice that there is a negative sign in front of the equation. Now, that's because our velocity when we fall is also negative, so by multiplying one negative by another it gives us a positive value, which outputs a positive height. We would not want to start burning at negative 100 meters, we want to start burning at positive 100 meters. Now, there is also another variable called the throttle delay factor. This number is added to our landing burn altitude and it helps to account for the fact that there is a delay from going to zero and 100% throttle. It also helps account for the fact that we are not necessarily going to be pointing 90 degrees to the ground, we're pointing retrograde, which means if we have any lateral velocity, some of our thrust is being used to cancel that out, meaning we're not going to have 100% of our thrust canceling out only our vertical velocity. If there were no throttle delay time, no drag, and no lateral velocity, then this program alone would be sufficient to land our craft perfectly every time. However, there is always going to be a little delay in our throttle and drag is always a factor, so we're going to have to give ourselves some buffer and start our burn slightly higher than needed. And if we're falling particularly fast, we're going to want to give ourselves a little bit extra buffer room for our program to be able to react. After we've calculated the height we need to start our landing burn, we check if our craft is in an appropriate set of conditions to need to fire its engines and start that landing burn. This if statement checks to make sure we are above our drop height, checks to see if we are at or if we have passed our landing burn altitude, and it checks to see that we are falling fast enough to justify lighting our engines. If we don't meet any one of those conditions, the program will cycle through again and wait until we do meet all of these conditions. Now, when our rocket meets all the necessary criteria, it's going to set our throttle to 1. If it doesn't meet all the criteria, it's going to throttle back down to 0. Now let's test the program in action. We'll start with a short fall from only a few hundred meters above the landing pad, and then work our way up until we are falling from almost the edge of the atmosphere. And that's really it for this program. You have one chunk of code that decides which half of the program to run and when, and then the other two just take a little bit of math to decide when to light the engines and how much. The structure behind this program is not at all complicated once you understand what it's trying to do, and the math is a little complicated, but nothing that a quick Google search and maybe asking your friend or parents about can't clear up for you. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful, and if you'd like to take a closer look at the code that I built for it, you can find a link to it in the description of this video below. If you like the channel, then go ahead and subscribe. 
What are you waiting for? It's as easy as clicking a single button and it costs you nothing at all and it lets me know that you want to see more content like this. Now take care of yourselves out there and as always, keep on building.